Hey, how you doing? Justin here. Today we are checking out XO by John Mayer. Beautiful acoustic tune, this one, with some really interesting chords going on. So let's start off by having a look at the chord grips, and then we'll talk a bit more about the strumming and all of that. So in the intro, we're starting off with a C chord. Noting, of course, there that we've got a capo on at the second fret. It's a regular C chord. However, we really want the thinner string to be muted. So you're going to let your first finger just lay down the tiniest bit to mute the thinnest string. Okay, thicker string should be muted by the third finger. The tip of the third finger there should be pushing up slightly. You should be doing that for your C chord anyway. But what we're really going for here is this being the top note. So when we're strumming, we want this to be the highest note that you hear, not, not this thinnest E. So just drop your first finger down just a little bit so that's the top note. Then we're gonna lift that off now still muting the thick, the thinner string there. For me, it's happening with the underneath of my third finger, kind of just under there. But it's still muted. So you need to find some part of your finger or hand to mute that thinner string, because we really want to hear this. Okay, that's the melody we want to hear. Now we've got first fingers going down in the second fret of the third string so it's kind of sneaking up there underneath the second finger okay at this point you're likely to hit that B string anyway it doesn't matter so much you want to kind of target this note but if you accidentally hit that B string it's going to be fine but you still don't want the thinner string And then it's lifted off but again we're kind of targeting this G we want the melody that we hear to be so when we're strumming I'm going to talk more about the strumming in just a second but let's start off with just getting those chords and muting that thinner string okay now in the verses, we have almost the same thing, but we don't quite do it in the same order. So in the verses, we have C, C major seven, C major seven again to this, I guess it's a C six or C add six, or C major 13 if you end up adding that note in, but let's call it C six, just to keep it simple. So C, C major seven, C six. Okay, so the intro, C, C major 7, C6, C. I mean, you might end up hitting that, which would make it C major 7 again, but let's just assume you're just hitting those three strings. And then the verses, C, C major 7, C major 7 again to the C6. Okay? The other chords that we need for the verse are an F. Now, you can't be playing F bar chord like this. It doesn't quite work. We need to be working on getting the thumb over now. So thumb is reaching around to play that F note. Third finger is either playing the th uh, three frets above the capo, both the fourth and fifth strings, or just the fourth string and muting the fifth string. Depends on what you're capable of. I like the sound of both, but it's quite tricky to train the finger up to press in between the strings to get both notes, unless you've got giant hands, like Mr. Mayer. I can do it, but it's tricky. Second finger, second fret of the third string and first finger first fret of the second string relative to the capo of course so that's the F again we're not playing the thinner string there then lifting off the first finger this gives us an F sharp 11 so an F in bracket sharp 11 that note being the sharp 11 put it back down for the F and then little finger is going down three frets above the capo in on the second string so we end up with this little melody okay so for the intro the melody we're looking for for the verses and then for the F and then back to the C okay so let's talk about the strumming a little bit now. It's a little bit complicated. It's even 16th note strumming. Okay, so 1E and a 2E and a 3E and a 4E and a 1E and a 2E and a 3E and a 4E and a... 
Now, you need to be doing it quite lightly because you need to accent some of the notes, and it's the accent patterns that really make the groove here. You definitely want to be using a very thin pick. If you use a thick pick, you're going to find it quite awkward to hold it and get it kind of light enough. I'm using a super uh, thin pick. I don't even know what it is. I just found it on the counter there. Very, very bendy uh, see-through pick. Uh, and so the trick here, the, the accent pattern is one E and a two and three E and a four E and a one E and a two and three E and a four E and a so down, up, down. Good way to practice it, just muting the, the strings of the guitar so you've got these clicks and then one E and a two and three E and a four E and a one E and a two and three E and a four E and a. If you can't do that, and get the accents there with the muted, you, you're never gonna get it with the chord, okay? So really good idea to practice it that way before you start applying it to the chords. Once you feel confident with it, you wanna try and apply that to the chord sequence, so. And it's really then about practicing it over and over, making sure you get those accents right. Again, a lot of listening to the original recording. In some ways, it's, I think it's easier to listen to it and learn it than it is to worry about counting one e and a two and three e and a four e and a. It just seems to be over complicating something that you should be able to pick up using your ears. Now, that's what's going on for the intro. Once we get into the verse, it's pretty much the same thing. <laughs> Chords are different, of course, and to the F. So there are little bits where I'm not playing every 16th note, but the motions are there. So you really, the key thing is keeping that hand moving and making it feel nice and relaxed. You'll never get it right with a tense arm. It's got to feel, I describe it like flicking water off your hand if it was wet. It wants to feel that loose to get that, the feeling. And like I said, it's, it's about playing lightly and consistently and then being able to add in those accents. Um, that's for the, for the intro and the verses. It goes intro, verse one, verse two. Verse two is essentially the same, just a little bit of piano is added in. And then we get to the chorus. Now the chorus, we've got a C chord and we're doing a little hammer-on pattern now. So the hammer-on pattern, So the, it's, we've got the second finger hammering down onto the second fret, like two frets above the capo, on the fourth string. With the rhythm, one, two, and three, four. One, two, and three, four. One, two, and three, four. So the accent, the hammer on and an accented strum is on one, two, and, and four. One, two, and. Again, if you're struggling with it, do the muted strumming thing. It's a really great way of sorting your rhythm out. Uh, when we, the second chord in the chorus is an A minor, and we do the, exactly the same thing, but we're hammering our first finger down. Okay, so first thing is hammering on one, two, and three, four. One, two, and three, four. Then F for one bar. Now, I keep debating this. Every time I listen to it, I decide a different thing. It's either G sus, so third finger, three frets above the capo, muted fifth string, open, 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 three. Now, first finger, it's either, or it stays there. I'm not sure, or it's off altogether. I keep, you know, like I said, you can decide. I'm probably gonna go for, So the chord sequence for the chorus, C. A minor. F. G. C. 
save. And that's it, okay? After that chorus, we've got verse three, verse four, exactly the same as the previous verses on guitar part. Then we've got two choruses. Then we've got the intro again, remembering that the intro is just different in the, uh, the order of the chords there. Uh, so it's actually not that much different, but that's where the harmonica comes in as well. And it plays another double chorus and we're out. So it's a really, really nice tune this, not a particularly difficult one. The key things are holding the pick lightly, continuous strumming, learning about accent passages. If you're struggling with the accent passages, do do that muting thing. No matter if you're doing 16th note patterns or funk or whatever, it's always better if you're learning accents to be doing it with the muted thing. It makes it a lot clearer than when you've got the chord going. Uh, especially don't be changing chords if you haven't got the accent passage right yet because you just... It won't work. Your ears will pick up on the chords and you'll get focused on that. You really want to strip away as much as you can and focus on the thing that you can't do. And for most people, that'll be that accenty thing. Um, I don't think the chords are particularly difficult ones. Uh, the arrangement's nice and simple. So this is definitely a really good one to be working on your, your rhythm skills, your chords, your chord movements, and your dynamics. Again, you really want to pick it up there for the chorus and drop it down a bit for the verses. I really hope you enjoyed this lesson. I've got loads more John Mayer over on the website, so do go and check that out. If you're enjoying the lesson, please do hit me the thumbs up if you're over on YouTube and do subscribe to my channel if you dig what I do. I really appreciate your support. I'll see you for plenty more very soon. You take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.